as Gotham City quickly transforms into the fear state, Batman will be fighting foes on both sides of the law. What will happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman issue number 111 and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up mere moments after the last issue ended, Sean Mahoney, aka the brand new Peacekeeper One, has cornered Miracle Molly and the rest of the Unsanity Collective, their orders being to execute the Robin Hood-style hippie group and frame them for the bombings the Peacekeeper's boss perpetrated. Molly, using her big science brain and quick thinking, manages to give the nasty cyborg cops the slip. Sadly, she wasn't able to save collective member Squeak from getting shot. Did I mention Squeak is a child and that the Peacekeepers have no problem shooting children? Squeak is ultimately revealed to be fine, but I imagine some people are going to argue that this was a little too hardcore and maybe in bad taste for a Batman comic. I'd argue read a newspaper sometime and see what real cops get away with all the time. Batman swoops on in and manages to make the save, but he's not alone. He's backed up by Ghostmaker and Harley Quinn. Harley adding some much-needed levity to the scene, saying that she just joined the Bat family before smacking someone in the face with her trademark baseball bat. With a little help from his allies, Batman is actually able to do much better this time around in his fight with Peacekeeper 1, allowing the members of the Unsanity Collective to escape. Unfortunately, working so close to former villains like Ghostmaker and Harley, even if they are clearly reformed, was sadly playing right into the hands of Simon Saint. Saint uses the footage he gathered from the fight to stir up his friends in the media. They decide to denounce Batman as having gone over to the dark side. This is all the proof Mayor Nakano, a man who never liked superheroes in the first place, needs to hand full reins of Gotham City over to the Peacekeepers and the Magistrate. Their orders are to bring the chaos in Gotham to an end at all costs, even if that means arresting or killing every masked vigilante they run across. And if you're thinking, hey, isn't this exactly how Future State started, you would be totally right. All of this, of course, ends up putting Batman in a rather awkward position. He needs Harley and Maker to keep the Unsanity Collective safe, as their testimony might actually be the only thing that can bring down Simon Saint and his magistrate machine. While all of that is going on, Batman thinks he knows where the Peacemakers are headed next, and that would be to arrest their co-conspirator, Jonathan Crane, aka the Scarecrow, the person who's been pulling all the strings behind the scenes, seeding Gotham with more and more paranoia and fear. Turns out Crane has actually been hiding this whole time under the ruins of Arkham Asylum, aka the last place anyone probably would have thought to look for an escaped Arkham inmate. Saint says they need to arrest him and make it look good for the cameras, and once the city knows that the Peacekeeper program can work and get the job done, they'll be sure to set Crane free and give him a high-ranking job within the organization, which is basically how it all ended up working for him in Future State. But here, and I could be wrong, it looks like Scarecrow ends up flipping the screen script and making the future state future once again only a possible future. You see, Scarecrow refuses to stop his great work. He says that he's managed to sow more fear than ever before in Gotham, and he did so without his usual toxins, but that his grand master plan involves Gotham falling even deeper into the fear state. He turns on Peacemaker 1, ravaging his mind with a newer, more powerful version of his fear toxin, before revealing that he knew Batman was watching him the whole time. Batman falls through the ceiling and ends up at the mercy of Scarecrow, this story coming full circle with those wraparounds we've been seeing all arc long as the comic ends. And so that was Batman 111, everybody, and Tynan does a good job growing the stakes for the upcoming Fear State story. This issue also is very interesting in regards to its relationship to Future State and all the different connective tissues therein. I think we've all been debating and wondering about the canonicity of those stories and I think, unless I'm completely proven wrong by the next issue, this is the moment wherein the timelines actually diverged. I will, however, need to keep reading to find out for certain, though. Overall, though, I'd feel comfortable giving this issue an 8 out of 10. Continues to be consistently enjoyable. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.